What's going on guys? Welcome back to The Commodity. I'm Fez and today we're taking a look at America versus Australia, my emergency room, my emergency room stories, Australian healthcare, American living, living in Australia. Um, so apparently a lot of conversation has been going on in the comments regarding healthcare and all that kind of stuff. So I figured let's take a look. Let's follow what the comments are doing. Um, so in the U.S., Everybody talks about the lack of the healthcare system, um, and I agree. I believe in healthcare for all, which was basically the original idea of what Obamacare was. And then I don't, I don't care if I get political. And then so I'm 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 considered left or liberal or whatever you want to call it. Um, and typically, all the not all. There's moderate liberals as well. I And I am a moderate liberal. But uh, I believe that everybody should have access to free health care. And half the country believes that. The other half does not. Main reason that they the other side doesn't believe is because they're afraid their taxes are going to go up. However, I feel like they're misguided or misunderstanding how it would work. So, yes, our taxes would go up a little bit. However, the cost is that's affecting us that's so high is our deductibles. So if I go to the hospital, let's say I go to the doctor, I have a deductible of $15 to see the doctor, which for a lot of people, that's not a big deal. And then if I need to go to the ER, there's a $100 deductible. Uh, for medicines, if it's generic medicine, it's free. If I have to get, if there's not a generic, g- generic, Gener- I've been at work all day for the last several days and I'm exhausted. It's 9 30 PM. I'm actually going to post this tonight so y'all can have it tonight. And then I got two videos that are going to be automotive for Sunday because like I said, I don't really want to post anything Sunday. So I just figure I do something fun. So I'm going to film them all three in a row. I'm going to edit all three in a row and then I'm probably going to pass out so fast. Um, but anyways, they're afraid. Okay. So they're afraid of High t- higher taxes because big government, blah, blah, blah. Um, however, realistically, if we raised our taxes for the upper class, the upper middle, um, it would pretty much cover everybody. Um, so to be fair, most countries that do have free health care do have higher tax rates than we do. However, we make up for it with deductibles. Because let's say there is a major medical issue and I have to go into surgery. um, Then we kind of have to deal with, uh, we have a minimum deductible. So we have to pay like, let's say it's like $10,000. And then after the $10,000, everything is covered for the rest of the year. So I wouldn't have to pay a deductible to see my doctor. I wouldn't have to pay a deductible uh, to do most anything. But unfortunately for a lot of the lower uh, financial people, I'm trying to be very PC here. Um, they're dedu- if they have insurance, it's typically much worse. And the deductibles are much higher and can get well into the $50,000 range, which is kind of dumb considering that they are lower income. So again... Don't think all, and I feel like a lot of Australians, a lot of Europeans, a lot of the people in Great Britain just call American dumb because of this situation. It's not America. It is the divided part of the nation. Some people, and I understand that countries that are much smaller don't have the situation because, and and they do, but just to a much smaller level. We just are the third largest country in population. So you're going to see that divide much higher. And we're literally the center of attention on most topics. And that kind of sucks because I feel it makes us all look stupid. Um, So I just wanted to preempt to that. There's a few things that I'm probably skipping. Um, However, we do have things that are helpful for very low income people that are qualified as uh, in poverty. So I think they have to make under $30,000 a year or something like that. And they would qualify. I always get these confused. Medicare, Medicaid. I think, 
I think Medicaid is for low income and Medicare is for elderly people, geriatric people. So my mom could get go on to Medicare. I again, I don't remember the two. I could Google in two seconds and figure it out. But one is for one, one is for the other. So if you're low income, you pretty much have free insurance. However, the higher the income, the more. Uh, well, really, the lower the income above your uh, uh, poverty level, typically means that you have kind of a worse job. So therefore, you might not have as good opportunities or good insurances and benefits and all that kind of stuff. Whereas a higher paying job, typically, you're going to get much better. Some of them even get free insurance. Like if you're an engineer or a computer scientist or anything like that, you can, a lot of jobs offer completely free health care. They just pay for it. And then typically they even don't have deductibles. I mean, it really just depends on how important your job is, is how you're going to be chosen, taken care of. But enough me talking. Let's get into this. I just want everybody to understand it's not all of America that believes that we don't need health care for all. It is literally, actually, I think it's a majority. However, when it comes to the politics in the U.S., it's kind of divided equally. So even the smaller portion of people can out can affect the turnout uh, for everybody. So good day, guys. Welcome back to the Just channel. You know. My name's Caitlin, and I'm an American learning to live down under here in beautiful Sydney, Australia. So since moving here, I have had so many friends, both here in Australia and in America, ask me what the healthcare system is like over here in Australia, if the healthcare system is really as much of a nightmare in America as people say. And while I'm still in the middle of doing research for a huge America versus Australia healthcare and health insurance video, this one is a little bit personal. In this, I am sharing my own emergency I need room to find stories, that. both in America in 2019 and over here in Australia in December 2021. So both of these are completely based off of my own experience, and hopefully this will give just a little bit of insight into just how different the healthcare systems are between these two countries. So take a seat, grab a bicky, grab a cuppo, because this is America versus Australia, my emergency room stories. So the health insurance that I had over in the States was tied to my employment like it is for so many other Americans. I paid $78 a fortnight and my employer paid $141 on top of that. Who is she talking to Fortnite? Do y'all use Fortnite? And to be fair, we do use improperly uh, bi-weekly, so I get it. I don't know why we do, or maybe we don't. I don't know. I've been told that we do, and I just believe it. So Because we say, if I get paid bi-weekly, that means that I get paid every other week bi-weekly. Or bi-monthly, same concept. So let me know if we're wrong. It doesn't matter. I mean, so we're talking $219 we a fortnight that was being put towards my health insurance. And I actually had pretty $19, ones. I paid $78 I a fortnight and my employer paid $141 on top of that. So we're talking $219. I don't know why she's adding what the employer pays. Because that doesn't matter to us. That doesn't affect us in any way. Every employer pays a certain percentage. I wouldn't include that. That's going to just make it look worse. Dollars a fortnight really that doesn't. was being put it, towards it my health insurance. You. And I actually had pretty decent health care coverage compared to some people I know. And this was just for medical. It didn't cover dental. It didn't cover vision. This was just medical. And I had about a $3,000 deductible over in the States. You get Over here in stuff. Australia, I am currently not eligible for Medicare. I yeah. know quite a few people have been asking me about this, saying, well, just apply for PR. You'll get it then. I will be able to apply for Medicare okay, at the Medicare end of the year. Sense. But until the end of the year, I am not eligible for Medicare. And I did come over with private health insurance, which I still pay fortnightly. And that has been $88 a fortnight over here in Australia. Okay, it's going to take me some getting used to with this fortnight nonsense. She so obviously, the price difference between the States and Australia is huge. 
On top of that, private health insurance isn't a requirement over here in Australia. There is a Medicare levy that does have to be paid over here if you don't have private health insurance, but it is significantly cheaper than the private health insurance over in the States. On top of that, health insurance in the States is actually a requirement, whereas over here in Australia, they have Medicare, so everybody who is a permanent resident or a citizen is already automatically covered through Medicare. So now that you know... So that was kind of part of Ob the, the requirement to have health insurance. It's kind of gone away. It went away with Donald Trump, basically. So I think you get a little bit of a fine still if you don't have health insurance. Um, but the whole point was that everybody needed it. The people that couldn't afford it would get it basically for free. Uh, and that was all the way up to like forty or $50,000 income. Like it, he raised it much higher to get it for free. The other major thing that he did was you could... So before Obama came into office... If let's say I came out and I found out that I had, um, let's say, uh, just for, just, let's say I had COPD, right? Just for example, if I have COPD and I have an insurance that doesn't really do well to cover those kind of medical needs, if I wanted to switch, I couldn't because most medical companies would not accept a new uh, person that has pre-existing symptoms. However, when Obamacare came in, that got that was erased. You could not charge extra or more. You were required to accept them at the regular rates. Whether I mean, you could have lung cancer, you could have the worst cancer possible, and be willing to pay a much higher cost for insurance just to be able to get those things covered, which was a phenomenal thing. It was a step forward. Um, and th some of those rules still stay in place. So, but like, let's say me, I would say I'm middle, upper middle class. So if I were to go without insurance, I would be fine. Because number one, my job offers it and now, I make that enough money. That bit of background about my so. insurance issues. Let me jump into what happened to me in the States in 2019. These health issues were completely different. They were almost really random events. They had nothing to do with former health concerns, any sort of pre-existing medical conditions. These were both fairly random and they are for completely different medical issues. So that will tie into the comparison a little bit. My issue over in the States was I was having really, really severe pain in like my uterus in that area. For adults, I think I could say uterus on YouTube. I went to the emergency room. Somebody drove me, so I didn't need an ambulance. They checked me in. I was in severe crippling pain. They had to lay me down on a bed. And I remember like on a scale of one to 10, that felt like an eight. It felt like something was really, really wrong. I was worried that maybe my IUD had shifted, but when the emergency room doctor came in, he did his quick little examination, um, basically just like pressing on my stomach in that area for about 30 seconds, sat down, said, no, your IUD hasn't shifted, it's not that. We can't give you an ultrasound right now because it's the weekend and our ultrasound machine is down on the weekends and we have no ultrasound techs who work on the weekends. So he basically said all he could do was give me a prescription for extra strength ibuprofen, which is pretty much the same as Nurofen over here in Australia. He gave me a prescription for that, told me to follow up with my OBGYN and to go home. I was in there for maybe about an hour and for a pregnancy test and extra strength Nurofen, that cost me $742 after my insurance paid their portion. She thinks she has good insurance. That ain't good insurance. That's terrible insurance. That should literally cost you fifteen to twenty dollars to get checked out. If she had to go to the ER again, it shouldn't be more than maybe two hundred dollars. And then, yeah, no, she has terrible, terrible insurance. She looks fairly young, so she may have been like entry level stuff, but that is terrible insurance. Um, so typically, so the way I'm taking this, so my ex-wife is in the medical field and 
I've talked to her on a bunch of this kind of stuff from what she deals with. She works in the ER where, uh, at a children's hospital. Um, so basically, if the doctor doesn't feel like there's any major issues, then maybe this might be the situation. But more than likely, let's say they weren't able to do it where they're located. They would then tell you to go to a specialist or to an ER. And if you're being uh, told to go to a specialist, you get a much cheaper rate for doing that. Again, you'll have a rate based off of your insurance. Um, But odds are he checked to see if it was something severe. I feel like there's some missing information here. I'm not saying that she's a liar, but not a lot of people think too deep into what's going on with within the medical field, I guess. Um, so I would think he had a general idea because the big thing in the U.S., they over uh, specialize. So they'll have them do a whole bunch of tests just to deal with so they don't get sued for mal, uh, malpractice. So if she were to have a major issue when she went home, just because their system isn't working and she wound up having something big time that could be life threatening, she would be able to sue that doctor for not sending her to a specialist or to an ER or to whatever the case may be. And I've never known a doctor that's willing to just be like, yeah, you go ahead. So I have a feeling that the doctor had a general idea or a basic idea to the point where he was confident that maybe just pass something or something like that or to follow up on Monday and find out what's going on. He did say to go see your OBGYN. So that would be a referral to a specialist And so it should be much cheaper. Realistically, that visit might cost around 50 bucks. Before my insurance kicked in, it was a little over $1,200. Now, on top of that, I did require some care a little bit later. I did have to go to my OBGYN and get an ultrasound done at another hospital. The ultrasound cost me about $60, and the visit to my OBGYN cost me an additional $80. See, now that makes sense. How the other one was so expensive, I do not understand. She had more stuff done, more major stuff done, having all that stuff. It should have been actually properly diagnosed me because I didn't have an ultrasound done when the actual incident was happening. So that was well over eight hundred dollars spent to be told we don't know what happened. Now, as for my emergency room issue in Australia, it was very, very different. This actually involved my eyes. I wear contact lenses. I'm actually cross-eyed. I'm sure if you take some stills, you would be able to see that, but typically my eyes are fairly straight when I have my contacts in. I've been wearing them since I was 13, but for some reason, my contacts one night wanted to give me a really weird problem. It wouldn't come out of my eye, and I had been playing around with my eyes so much to get it out that it had felt sore, it felt swollen, and still felt like the contact lens was stuck in my eye. So I went to sleep and woke up the next day, and it felt so much worse. I've been there. So Mark drove me over to the emergency room that I was able to go to on my private health insurance. We couldn't go to the closer hospital because that's public. I had to go a little bit further to Westmead, which is private. And this was one of the things that really caught me off guard. Because it was COVID, Mark couldn't come in. So when I walked in and checked myself in, I gave them my health insurance card. I gave them a copy of my passport too. And they said, okay, it's going to be $312. Like, I haven't even been seen by anybody yet. Is that just the administrative cost to $312 for an emergency room visit before anybody's even seen me? So it is what it is. They said that they would mail me my invoice. I said, that's fine. Sat down. I probably had about half an hour wait before actually seeing a doctor. She checked my eyes. She washed them out. She rinsed them out, put a couple drops in, examined them. She said that she couldn't find anything in there. My eye was just so swollen from messing around with it so much that the contact lens had probably dislodged and popped out and I didn't even realize it. So she gave me an antibiotic cream. She gave me some saline and sent me home. There was no need to go to the chemist like I did over in the States to get my prescription filled. It was all given to me right then and there. And this might not be the norm. Again, this is just my emergency room experiences, and I'm sure they're very different. 
all across hospitals all across the states, all across the states and territories over here in Australia as well. So it took a little over a month for me to actually get that invoice in from the hospital and when it came in I almost fell over. My entire emergency room visit was $156. It was half of the fee that they told me up front and there were no additional costs added. And this was the entire fee up front. This was before I was reimbursed by my insurance company. I called them up, paid the full fee, and then sent a copy of that invoice over to my insurance, and they reimbursed me $90.35, which means my entire emergency room visit over here in Australia with just private health insurance without Medicare cost me $65.65 out of pocket. That's how much just the ultrasound cost me over in the States. I was absolutely... To be fair, these things are two different things. Just saying. Because an ultrasound, I could see like $50, $50 to $100, no problem. Um, what she paid for was outrageous in the U.S., even for bad... Yeah. Flabbergasted I mean, she had when I opened up the statement so. and saw that that's all I had to pay and then to find out that I was getting a huge chunk of that reimbursed through my insurance over in the states you really have to fight with your insurance company to get anything reimbursed to get a lot of things covered over no you don't again it goes back down to what level of insurance you have how much you pay like I, I only pay like 120 bucks a month for my insurance and for me to if I went to a regular doctor to get let's say <laughs> my ovaries were having an issue and I just went to the doctor that would have cost me $15 if I had to go to the ER uh, again 100 I think it's 100 maybe 150 bucks um, and then the test yes does cost extra depending on the situation depending on the test depending on uh who's doing it and how it's being done and all that. So there are variables, but if you have good insurance, even in the same insurance company that you have levels, I've never had a single issue and we've done some crazy stuff. Um, I'm not the healthiest person, but like for me to, okay. So simple doctor visit to get my anxiety medicine. It's literally go visit the doctor, 15 bucks go get my anxiety medicine and I do uh, non uh, non brand. So I do the generic stuff and here in it Australia, costs me all I zero had to dollars. do is fill out a so. claim form in about 60 seconds and I was finished. Yeah. I am still kind of in shock at just how affordable healthcare is over here in Australia. Like I almost said the word cheap and I know that there are Australians who are going to be like, that's not cheap. Having to pay that much, like, no, wait till you're on Medicare and it's free or wait till you're on Medicare and it'll be like $6, not 65. That's cheap. But with my experiences in the States, even just going to your regular doctor, your GP or your PCP as it's normally called over in the States, that can cost up to a hundred dollars if you're not going for just a regular routine annual examination. Going to my dermatologist for just a regular routine in the States, that can cost up to How does $100 that? if you're not going for just a regular routine annual examination. Going to my dermatologist for a prescription refill used to cost me $90 just to walk in the sure. door and get seen over in the States, and that was with my health insurance. Over here, I was able okay, to get that exact same prescription filled by a GP. It cost me $10 to go to the GP, and the prescription only cost me $7. So it really is amazing just how affordable the healthcare is over here. I can only imagine what it's like in other OECD countries that have a sort of similar healthcare system to Australia. And honestly, it is so frustrating to hear so many Americans talk about how horrible a socialized healthcare system could be or how terrible the care is, when really I felt like I've had so much better care over here in Australia than I've ever had over in the States. Granted, I've had a lot more care over in the States. I've seen an array of different doctors. Some were wonderful, some were awful. And over here in Australia, I've been lucky that the doctors I've run into are very you're kind get that no matter where you're at. The administrative staff and the nurses have been professional and very, very helpful so far. And again, this is all just coming from my own personal experience. I don't really have statistics to talk about.
Like I said, this is one of those more anecdotal, kind of chill videos with you guys. This isn't something where I'm going to be getting into a deep dive, talking about the statistics of healthcare and yada yada yada. I'm still doing a little bit more research on that and it feels like I have gone down a huge rabbit hole trying to find this information. So if that video is in the pipeline, it will happen. It might not happen too soon, but I'm still doing research on that. So stay tuned if you want to see what that future America versus Australia video is going to be. But thank you guys for- I do want to see it. Yeah, so um, 100%, I'm on board with the universal healthcare, uh, free healthcare for all type thing. Yes, it might cause some of our taxes to go up, but at the same time, I pay. we pay as a whole- way more in deductibles and our monthly dues than what the taxes will go up. And to be perfectly honest, I'm okay. Even if it's a, a little bit more per month, if it helps out somebody else, like I'm okay with paying more taxes to help other people that can't afford it. I have, n and that's a very uh, liberal thing in the United States. Republicans have a hard time and I'm not blanketing everybody, but the 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 definitely the far right and the mid to far right are very like I don't want to pay more in taxes I don't want to do this I don't want to do that where I understand that I have a job as a middle to middle upper class individual to help people and be able to pay my taxes to help people I have zero issues with that. In fact, I like it like that because I'm a greedy son of a bitch. I don't like spending money and giving money to people. But if I am told to do it, then I will do it. And I'm okay with it because it makes me feel good. I love buying gifts. But at the same time, if I could give somebody free health care, that's what I'd rather do. A hundred percent. So, yes, no, you're not going to. the. There might be a couple things I'd be willing to argue Um I mean, we do have, fun we have a lot of crappy doctors for sure, but I feel like that's an everywhere type of situation. Again, statistically, we have more people, so we're going to have more crappy doctors. It's just a numbers game at that point. However, we have some of the best facilities because we have the, because they're privatized. The healthcare is privatized, so therefore, they take all this money. Our hospitals are phenomenal, like for sure. But what's funny is I've had the complete opposite situation that she had. I went in, and I was having a sore throat, and I had been dealing with it almost every year for like years in a row. My doctor looked in, and he was like, uh, let's just take these out. And I was like, okay, let's do it. He was like, do you want to reschedule? Or you want to go straight today? And I was like, I got nothing going on for the next couple of days. Um, it was like on a Friday or something like that. And I already had the appointment set and he was like, well, let's get going. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, here's where you need to be. Here's what you need to do. And under my insurance, I think I paid, this was years ago. I can only even remember but it's like 300 bucks to get my tonsils taken out or something like that. But I'm not talking about money. Like I said, I agree. We need to have free health care where, where we kind of deal with it in taxes versus uh, deductibles. So, uh, but the thing is, I mean, everything's state of the art. Everything is almost brand new because they get some type of money from the government. And then they also get some type of money from the city and then they get, and I mean, when I say government, I mean federal government, and then they get paid a lot from the insurance companies and then they get given money by foundations and things like that because a lot of hospitals have like burn wards and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, and plus most of the companies that manufacture this equipment, not all, but the vast majority like General Electric is based right here in the United States. Um, so that's definitely a huge plus for us. And then I think one of the other things that we have, and I don't mean we, I mean a lot of the arguments I hear is Canada. So Canada has healthcare again, but they have such a long wait time to get stuff taken care of. And apparently I've heard 
horror stories about how the quality of their doctors, their education, all that kind of stuff. And a lot of them will actually come to the United States and pay out of pocket to get health care taken care of. Um, but I think like a lot of that is stretched. Like most of the stuff is being told to me here in Texas. And I'm like, when was the last time you were in a border city? Half of the Texans that talk trash about this stuff have maybe five teeth in their mouth. You know what I mean? That's what I'm basically saying. So I'm on board 100% to have free health care. Again, even if my insur- my taxes go up a little bit, I don't care. I don't want them to go up outrageous, but I do not mind if they go up, if I don't have to pay deductibles, if I don't have to pay, if it does cover my uh, medication, if it does cover uh, me going to the ER, if I, there's an emergency and all those kind of things. Because sometimes I'm just like, I'm not going to go to the ER. I don't want to spend that money. But if I didn't have to come out of pocket, it'd be a lot better. But guys, I know I've been talking so much in this video because her situation and my situation have been obviously different. Her American insurance sounds terrible, terrible. And if I didn't hear the very beginning or I miss, or forgot already talking about uh, when she needed to go because she was having some stuff with her uh, lady parts. Um, if she went to an ER, if they didn't have, uh, well, what was the test that she was needing? Uh, uh, CT scan or upper wrist uh, or some type of scan. And they only have one at their hospital. She went to a very, 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 very small hospital. Um, but again, uh, that's per person. Now, if I went to like the ER next door, yeah, they probably have, probably don't have any of it, but they're really just designed to do like, make sure you don't die before like uh, it, a, a helicopter comes pick you up to take you directly to a hospital. But anyways, guys, that we're going to go ahead and stop it right here. Uh, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I hope I didn't talk too much. I hope y'all don't hate me too much. I know I talk a lot, but I had some thoughts and obviously my, I went through something completely different than her. My insurance is different than her and everybody's insurance is very different. Like my parents' insurance is different than my insurance. Uh, somebody working at a d- different dealership has different insurance than me. So it can very vastly, but guys, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. There is a gnat and it's driving me nuts. Uh, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notification. Don't hate me too much. And until next time, bye.